and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Colombian peasant leaders released from pre-trial detention. Police officer in the Philippines charged with murder after fatally shooting woman and son. Former Kurdish parliamentarian Leela Gowen sentenced to over 22 years in prison. Sudanese protesters demand meaningful reform. Colombian peasant leaders Teofilo Acuna, Roberto Gaza and Adelso Gallo have been released from pre-trial detention. Their release was announced at a hearing held in Santa Marta on December 21st. Acuna, Gaza and Gallo had been arrested by Colombian authorities between December 15th and 16th. The arrests had been widely condemned as another instance of the growing criminalization and persecution of social movements in Colombia. Acuna, Gaza and Gallo are spokespersons of the Agrarian, Peasant, Ethnic and People Summit in Colombia. They are also members of the National Agrarian Coordinator and the People's Congress. They have been fighting for peasants and other social causes in different parts of the country, often risking judicial persecution. According to a 2020 report by the Institute of Development and Peace Studies, more than 1,090 social leaders and activists have been killed in Colombia since 2016. 63% of these deaths occurred under the right-wing government of President Ivan Duque. Members from various organizations gathered in support of the three leaders outside the courthouse on the day of the hearing. Their release has been welcomed as an important step in proving the innocence against the false accusations made by the Attorney General's office. A police officer in the Philippines has been charged and arrested for the murder of a mother and her son. The accused, Jonel Nuesca, shot and killed his neighbor, Sonia Gregorio, and her son, Frank, in Tarlac City on December 20th. An argument between the neighbors started after Frank Gregorio set off a celebratory noise cannon. The argument proceeded to escalate over an ongoing land dispute between the families. Noeska, who was off duty at the time, then tried to arrest Frank. Video footage of the incident then shows him firing multiple rounds at Sonia and Frank. He then proceeded to flee the scene and returned to surrender a few hours later. Noeska had used a service revolver issued to him by the Philippines National Police. He had also previously faced five administrative charges, including two for murder. However, these charges were dropped due to a lack of evidence. In spite of this, Noeska was allowed to carry a gun off duty. Police officials have stated that the Philippines government passed an order allowing officers to carry their service weapons off duty, including during the holiday season. The killings of Sonia and Frank Gregorio have intensified public outrage against police violence and lack of accountability under the government of President Rodrigo Duterte. People flooded social media networks with the hashtag Stop the Killing and Police are Terrorists in the days following the incident. An investigation into the arming of off-duty police officers was also launched by the Department of Interior and Local Government on December 21st. Former Kurdish parliamentarian Leela Gouin has been sentenced to over 22 years in prison. Gouin has been convicted of having membership to a terrorist group and for disseminating terrorist propaganda. The decision was announced by a Turkish court on December 21st. Gouin was the elected representative from Hakkari in the Kurdish-dominated eastern region of Turkey. However, she was stripped of a parliamentary seat and immunity along with two other parliamentarians in June this year. She was also a member of pro-Kurdish organizations such as the People's Democratic Union or H3P and the Democratic Society Congress, of which she was also a co-chair. In 2018, she also sat on the hunger strike for 200 days to demand an end to the isolation of Abdullah Okalan in a Turkish jail. Okalan is the leader of the banned Kurdish Workers' Party, which has been fighting for the independence of Kurdish regions in Turkey since 1984. Gouin was reportedly detained and sent to the Arbaki Romans' prison. Gouin was also previously sentenced to one year in prison after she called a Turkish operation against a Syrian Kurdish group an invasion. The HDP has denounced Gouin's sentence as an unlawful and hostile act against the opposition and all Kurds. It has further stated that it will appeal against the sentence. For our final story today, we turn to Sudan where massive protests were held on Saturday to demand the implementation of meaningful democratic reforms. Protesters allege that the transitional government has failed to realize the goals of the 2018 December Revolution. Here is a video feature on the current situation in the country. Tens of thousands of protesters took to the streets in Sudan's capital Khartoum and its twin city Umdurman on December 19th. The date marked the two-year anniversary of the December Revolution, which began in 2018. This movement overthrew longtime dictator Omar al-Bashir 
and made way for the current transitional government. This year, grassroots organizations and left forces which had spearheaded this mass movement called for a course correction. Omar al-Bashir now stands trial at the ICC for genocide and his party is dismantled. Protesters are unhappy with the slow progress and the full transfer of power to civilian forces. Over the past year, the military, armed rebel movements, and centrist parties have formed an alliance. This alliance is seeking to marginalize the left and popular forces in the Legislative Council to be formed on December 31st. Protesters allege that the transformatory agenda of the December Revolution has been abandoned for surface changes. The Sudanese Communist Party has withdrawn from the ruling coalition. Many left organizations have also broken ranks with the ruling coalition. These include neighborhood resistance committees and the new secretariat faction of the now split trade union coalition called the Sudanese Professionals Association. It was these same organizations which had formed the backbone of the mass movement which brought down Bashir. These groups have the ability for mass mobilizations on the streets. The Association of the December Revolution Martyrs Families has also joined the protests against the transitional government. It has demanded that the committee formed to investigate the massacre of 127 protesters on June 3rd last year should publish its results. The massacre was carried out by a militia controlled by the military junta, which was in power before the formation of the transitional government. Members of this junta remain in powerful positions in the transitional government which followed. El Sir Kasha, a member of the association said, the streets do not betray. The revolution has deviated from its course and corrections must be made. That's all the time we have for today. For more such stories and videos, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you for watching.